I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. this morning I think yeah yeah good morning everybody hello good afternoon welcome to the Jason show I'm Jace let's start with this uh, when most of us uh, go for a walk or a workout we wear shorts or sweats right yeah. right audience yeah, yeah. <laughs> not Lenny Kravitz no no oh, yeah. look at this so this is Lenny on his Instagram he's working out in leather pants, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Yep. That's not all. He's also rocking a fishnet, tank top, and sunglasses. Most commenters say only, only Lenny Kravitz could get away by wearing this outfit. <laughs> get away with working out in this outfit. And as a treat at the very end of the show, our producer, BB, will recreate that. That's right. Roll the music, Leo. Let's get started. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kendall Mark, everybody. Hello. Hi. Happy day, friend. How you doing? Happy day. Surprise! No one that BB actually does own that outfit. He actually he really does. Could, yeah, producer BB does it. own that outfit. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. very. He actually does own fishnets. I do know uh -huh. that a fishnet uh -huh. tank top. Yeah. So yeah. How you doing, friend? I feel great. How are you today? I'm doing well. We uh, we uh, up in the office today. I'm in a really good mood because. Uh, uh, oh, thank you for wooing my good mood. Yeah. <laughs> It's better than coming to the show when I'm in a crappy mood. That's right. No, that never happens. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, but no, I'm in a good mood. We got puppy kisses up in the meeting today. The Humane Society was here bringing uh, puppies, and uh, I got a little puppy love in, and mm -hmm. oh, so cute. Did you yes. arrange that? Um, no, that was actually, of course, Eric. Photographer Eric. Eric. They're in house because they're talking about their walk for animals. Oh, the walk for animals, yeah. So yeah. If you're in Minnesota, head to the walk for animals, check it out. It's a great fundraiser for the Humane Society. Well, and uh, two things on that note, and then I have something else to pr a preview for you. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've been keeping. Well, I keep you up to date with my life in general, but I, you, a lot of you have been very interested, and I really appreciate it. Um, if after the passing of my beloved boxer, Dexter, if we were going to get another dog, uh, an, an additional dog, because we have Mr. Big, uh, currently an only child, mm -hmm. and I'm just uh, telling you, uh, much to the delight of my mother, we are one step closer to getting another dog. Yeah, yeah. So... Let me tell you what's happening real quick. Uh, I have my mother on one side of, of town sending me text messages. She's contacting everybody that's ever had a boxer, uh, has bo boxer puppies. She's calling people in Canada. She's calling people in Florida. Oh, wow. She called a couple people in Spain. That's long and, I, and, then, and then my, and then my, and then I have my sister-in-law Tammy doing the exact same thing. And uh, we're, we're talking to some folks and. I might have more news in the next coming uh, upcoming weeks. Yeah. Now, 
also, also, I got to tell you, and I'm not exaggerating this to get you to watch or to, to be entertaining. We taped another fast food field trip yesterday, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to tell you where, but I will tell you who was our special guest, and that was our audience coordinator and the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities, Aaron Schwaberini. Yeah, for the first time. Let's take it. There she is right there. Now, a couple things happened. Let me give you a preview first. We sent Aaron in to the facility to pick up said item. Uh, she was in there for so long, she was FaceTiming us, so that's a preview. Uh, and then the next thing that happened, and this is the headline, for the first time in the history, mm -hmm. the history of this segment, mm -hmm. all four of us, and yes, Eric got to eat. That was the story. Yeah. <laughs> all four of us gave said item a perfect 10. Wow. A perfect 10. And it wasn't even close. Now, I will tell you, part two of this, <laughs> we wanted to remove Aaron from the car. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's okay, Aaron. I Jeff and I feeling. absolutely hated something, and Aaron is in the back going, oh, this is really good. Uh, yeah, so you'll, you'll see that. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. There seems to be a running theme here, because when BB went on the trip, when I went on the trip, when Hanson went on the trip, and now when Schwaberini went on the trip, you wanted to remove all of us from the car at one point or another. No, just you. Oh, well, I mean, I feel like this is a theme. No, no here's what happened. BB, Aaron, Stephanie, Fallon, we only wanted to remove them once, maybe twice. Okay. You were five, six, or seven times we wanted to remove you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the difference. I'm not the little sister for nothing. That's right. Let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Okay, it was one of the biggest water cooler shows of the 90s. Now get ready for a return of one of the biggest shows ever on Fox. Grant, oh, opening that refrigerator. I love that shot of Grant's show opening that refrigerator. Anyway, Me too. yep, Melrose Place is coming back. The original ran for seven seasons on Fox, ending in 1999. Needless to say, it was a huge hit for Fox. Uh, for Fox was fairly new at that point, about four or five years old. The three original stars of the show, including Heather Locklear are right there, uh, will return for the new version. Joining her will be uh, Daphne Zun uh, Zuniga and Laura Layton. Now the plot says one of their original friends kicks the bucket, which brings them all back to, I guess, the condo unit. Uh, it's not clear yet if any of the other main stars will return, or we don't even know when the show will air, it has yet to even be picked up by a network. But those three women are shepherding this and they're hoping to get it on the air. So they've all, now let me say, they've all, the CW did a yes. reboot of Melrose Place and In it was nine. heinous. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. It wasn't very good. It was just like what the CW no. did to Dynasty, as or as I called it, Dynasty. It wasn't <laughs> Dynasty, it was Dynasty. Okay. They took a Dynasty was about middle aged rich people. Uh huh. Then the CW turned them into toddlers. And and and, and that's it was horrible. It wasn't toddlers. They were like, you know, my age when I was in my early Nobody 20s. is rich your age. Nobody. Yeah, I know, and, they, I know. and Dynasty that was the great thing was they were middle-aged people. You got to see rich, middle-aged people. The 90210 redo was good, though. It was. You're right about that. The CW did do that right. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't a big fan of Melrose Place, but hey, mm -hmm. anytime to see Heather Locklear on TV, who, by the way, Heather was also on Dynasty. A little fun fact. Fun yeah. facts galore. She was Sammy Joe, troublemaker. Next in the dish, the people who put on the Oscars must have been watching our show because on Wednesday they announced that next year's awards will once again start early at 6 p.m. Central. That's right. Thanks. Yeah. That was new this year. That was new this year, and many people, including myself, 
we loved it. We praised the decision. We said, go ABC. It may have helped the Oscar ratings go up uh, too because it went up to about 20 million people, which is great. The only change for next year is the show will air one week earlier. We still don't know about a host, uh, but there's a good chance I, that Jimmy Kimmel might return. Mm -hmm. I don't know though. I think I, I'm gonna make a prediction. I don't think he's gonna come back next year. Who do you think would host it then though? <laughs> Somebody said me, yeah, no. I would, no. I wouldn't do that job. Uh-uh. I wouldn't have no. that job for all the chip, for all the chicken fingers at Culver's. I would not, no, uh-uh, no. It's or the burgers. I don't know, I gotta think on that. But uh, I, yeah. I don't think he'll be back though. I think he, he seems to like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't see why he wouldn't, because he's done it, what, four times or five? I think five. You know who I would like to see back? Steve Martin and Mort Martin Short. Oh. I, I would like, okay, no, no, okay. Leo wants Melissa Peterman. Okay, well, I'll go to commercial before yeah. the audience disagrees with me more. There we go. We'll be right back, back after this. But first, as we go to break, happy birthday to everybody in our birthday club. They get that pin, sash, and up to $20 of free play at Grand Casino. Back after this. Welcome back. We'll get to some more hot dish in a little bit, but our first guest today makes us laugh and laugh every day on her hit game show, Person, Place, or Thing, where she always asks the very tough questions. Look. This place is a business that sold prescription whiskey during Prohibition. Eli. What is Walgreens? Yes! <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's that's my buddy. That's my heart. That's my uh, sister from another mister. That is the one and only Melissa Peterman. Now she's inviting. Yeah, she's inviting anyone at home to join the fun and win some money. Audience, keep the clapping going for the one and only Melissa Peterman. Missy. Uh, uh, With you. I miss Missy. Where the hell are you? Are you in an extra bed? Are you blink twice if you've been kidnapped? Where Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Where is? Uh, are, we, are you in your home? I am in. I'm in LA. I'm in my guest room here, and uh, while people are were still sleeping when I started this, so I'm in Los Angeles right now. I love it. How you doing, sweetie? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I uh, I miss you. Are you going to come back anytime soon? Oh, yeah. I'll be back. I think um, I'm, right now the game plan is all of July and then probably back again for State Fair. So I will be back. Okay. No, I'm going to lock you in for something, and then we'll get to your show, I promise. Uh, Stephen Brown, if okay. he's watching, calm down. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, when you come back, do you know what we, you know our fast food field trips that we do, Missy? I've been watching them. You've gone to like Taco. Didn't you get to like work at Taco Bell and everything? We've yeah, we've done everything. Will you please do a, a fast food field trip with us? Yeah. Finally, I'll do it, and it'll be filmed instead of just doing it on my own all the time. <laughs> I've been doing these fast food field trips, and it's never been on TV. It's just me and my car. So yes, I want to do it. <laughs> okay. Let's start with this. Um, you got you have a contest going, a super fan contest. It kicked off on Monday on person, uh, place, or thing. Tell the folks about this. Yeah, we have a uh, one of the great aspects about the show that I love is that somebody can play along from home, wearing their soft pants. Maybe they've just gone on a fast food field trip. They're home, and they can watch along. And if our contestant in the studio wins. The $5,000, they're going to win $500. And in season one, we gave away $24,000 to our super fans. And a couple of them were from the beautiful, my home state of Minnesota. So come play. I love it. Okay. Because uh, we only get, you would think because we're best friends, they, the network would give us more than four minutes. But, you know. Anyway, so I got to take Wait, down. What? I only have four minutes? Yes. I know. So we've got like hours 
of things to talk about. Right? Okay, so let me go to the next one. So, okay. uh, audience, friends, you might have heard that lady right there is reuniting with her friend Reba for a new pilot, for a new pilot uh, on NBC. I happen to have someone that was in the audience for the taping of the pilot, and let me just throw a compliment. They said you were fabulous. What was the, what was the shooting of the, what can you tell me? What was the shooting of the pilot like? Um, it was so surreal, Jason. It was like, it, you know, I felt like I'd walked back into time. Like, first of all, I don't think we've done a live studio audience, like a, like a taping of a pilot since I was doing Baby Daddy, like in 2017. So that was awesome. And then being with Reba, it was like going home again. And it felt so um, easy and fun. And the show went really well. And I was so excited when you texted me because um, that you that somebody that, that we knew was in the audience. So right now, we just wait and see. I, I felt so good about the show. I saw Reba the other day. She feels great about it. And, you know, a pilot, you know, it's like make, you, you have an appetizer and it's you're, you're hoping that the network wants the whole meal. And I think we made a really good appetizer and we're just hoping that they order the, the whole dinner and we get to come back and make um, some more TV together. Oh, they great. will. They better. They, they, they better. Okay, next, speaking of a show that's already on that you're wrapping up, what, what's it been like on the set of Young Sheldon? Because you're wrapping up and I think, oh, like, look, oh, there's Annie Potts right there. What's that been like this season? Uh, you know, I was just there uh, yesterday, you know, the day before. It's, it's very emotional, you know, and as somebody who's just been lucky enough to play, uh, a, be a guest star and be Brenda, that entire, that core cast, especially the kids, they've grown up on that set. And, um, you know, and Annie is like Mima to them, and they are such a tight family. And so there's been a lot of tears. I'm not going to lie. I, I uh, choked up just because it's such a wonderful show, and it's a, an honor to be a part of it. But a lot, of, it's very emotional. It's very emotional. Missy, please tell me, Annie's as wonderful as I want her to be, right? Yes, she is absolutely as wonderful as oh. I want her to be. And if you, the next time you're in um, Los Angeles, I'm going to make sure that you get to come hang out with Annie because she's truly, she's, she's good people. Missy, I, I might pee. I, I might, I, I might. I know. I, sometimes I can't believe I have her address. I'm like, Annie, are you sure you want me to have your address? Yes! Um, but she's so lovely. She's so funny. Um, and, you know, I've had moments where I'm like, oh, my gosh, Designing Women, Pretty in Pink, Ghostbusters. Like, it just runs through my head. Yeah. And uh, I have she to She works at she, Sugar Bakers. I know. I can listen to those monologues, those great monologues. And just, like, she was. She was a sugar. She was in the Sugar Baker design house all the time. She's amazing. Yeah. Okay. I can't stand it. Now, before we go, and I'm going to... I, we noticed something, Missy. I'm going to read this, and you, you tell me. I'm getting ready to make fun of our boss, Stephen Brown, here. But let me. So here we go. I want all of you to enter the super fan contest. Head to, and are you ready? Yes. Person, place, or thing on TV.com slash superfan. Now look at how long that graphic is. Now that, now what the hell is Steve, Fox? That is the longest uh, website address I've ever seen in my life. Look at this, Missy. Look, look, the only thing longer is, put it up there, control room. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> Tongue. It's just so, it's like www.personplacerthing on tv.com slash superfan. It's, mean, it's very long. It is very long. I'm not going to get that tattooed anywhere. That's a long. <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. We'll see you soon. I love you too. Thank you for having me. I'm going to catch you later. Oh, my goodness. Tongue. Do they want people to enter the contest? <laughs> yeah, they do. I know. <laughs> Jeff is like, don't make corporate mad. Don't make corporate mad. <laughs> they don't watch our show. Anyway, more just, uh, uh, isn't she great audience? She's yeah. the best. She's just, yeah. She's one, she sent, when Kai was born, she sent a really sweet little gift for me. Oh, yeah. Like she made custom little onesies for him. They say things like, Auntie Jason told me I could, and things like that. <laughs> She's just the nicest person. She's a real deal. This, this, uh, I'll say it again. I know we got dish to get to, but um, what you, I say this every time, and I, but it all I, bears repeating. 
what you see there, that's exactly who that woman is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Aaron's known her for years. That's exactly who Melissa Peterman is. Whenever I've done something or the show reaches a milestone or uh, whatever, Missy is always one of the first to send a text, mm -hmm. come support me. It's, it's She's the best. Back to the dish. He's been rocking since the early 80s, but you may not realize John Bon Jovi record, yeah, thank you, recorded a song uh, before he was in a band. Jimmy Kimmel uncovered that song in our Late Night Rewind. Oh, no. uh, our team here is very excited that they <laughs> found your actual first recording. Yes, sir. Which is, uh, yeah. believe it or not, this is going to seem like a joke. This is not a joke. On a Star Wars tribute <laughs> Christmas album. <laughs> The Star Wars Christmas album. That's right. How did you wind up on this? I was a gopher in a recording studio from the fall of 1980 until 83 when we did the first record. And there was a guy named Miko Minardo who was doing these kind of tribute records taking advantage of the Star Wars craze. He was pretending to be a young boy singing the song. It sounded like an old man <laughs> pretending to be a young boy. And he says, young boy, can you sing? And I said, that's what, you know, I, yeah, I think I can. He says, go in there, and if you want to do this, it pays $183. And I got $183. Do you remember the title of the song? Yeah. R2 what was it? We wish you a Merry Christmas. R2D2. We wish you a Merry Christmas. That's so good. Bon Jovi, by the way, is part of a new documentary on Hulu uh, streaming later this month. Next up, talk about hot topics. A strange start to The View on Wednesday. Watch, watch this. Watch what happened at the beginning of the show. Watch this. We walked out to Billy Joel's hit, We Didn't Start the Fire, <laughs> because it actually happened next door at Tamron Hall. <laughs> yeah. That was a this fire. morning we had to evacuate the studio mm -hmm. because there was a fire. <laughs> <laughs> that we did not start. We don't know who started it. We don't know what started it. <laughs> Why are we being photographed just walking down the street? <laughs> well, it was so unusual. They That's... have a lot of airtime to fill. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, well, the studio, the show's studio was evacuated, like you heard Whoopi say, when a fire broke out uh, at the studio next to them, which houses the Tamron Hall show, uh, a grease fire was to blame. What the? What are they cooking on Tamron Hall? Anyway, uh, luckily no one was hurt. Mm -hmm. We've we've only we had we've never had something like that happen here. We did have a situation. I think it was season one or season two, where I think a guest brought like a candle or something, and it let off the the, the alarm, fire alarm, the fire. And we had every engineer in this building. We had uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, we didn't have much of an audience at that point. But yeah, <laughs> it was it was very it was. There was an email. Uh, we got it. We we uh, we got into a little bit of trouble. We were lucky. We were lucky. There was a season two after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to see Aaron Schwab with that job. The lady was just like pointing, 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 evacuating the people. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Let's hope she never has to do that. Yeah. We're gonna take a break. Uh, Michelle Young from The Bachelorette is our special guest. That and more when we come back. Back in a moment. It is always always a party when she stops by. Coming up in just a little bit, our buddy Melissa Peterman joins us live to talk about the latest season of her hit game show, Person, Place, or Thing, plus her reunion with Reba. And a little bit later, she is a favorite in Bachelor Nation from The Bachelor and Bachelorette. Michelle Young is our special guest in studio. That and more when The Jason Show continues. And I know that tease you just saw said that Melissa Peterman's coming up. 
she was already on the show. Uh, just that that was my fault. I wrote that at about five o'clock in the morning. Anyway, well, you know, our next guest today is the Bachelorette from Minnesota. Michelle Young first appeared on The Bachelor back in 2021 and then became, she was so popular, she became The Bachelorette. She got engaged during the finale of her season, but uh, things didn't work out and the engagement was called off. Luckily, no, 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 oh, oh. Let me tell you, things worked out okay for her. Yeah, uh, <laughs> luckily she found love again. Michelle is currently dating uh, Jack right there. Hi, Jack. A uh, former, th thank you audience, everyone's saying hi to Jack too. A former college football player who's also from Minnesota and it turns out Jack, now are you following me here? Jack is friends with our foodie queen Stephanie Hansen. So Stephanie, right? Stephanie brought the couple on for an episode of Taste Buds. We have a little bit of that, look. Jack lay us today. Jack and I have known each other for, we were trying to figure out how long. I think 11 years. Yeah. We work on the Stone Arch Bridge Festival together, and we have a funny story for you. So you know how you're like scrolling on Instagram? My daughter calls me and she's like, Mom, Mom, did you see that Jack has a new girlfriend? I was like, oh, Jack has a girlfriend, okay. Ellie says, well, look, go look on his Instagram. So I look, and there's this pretty young lady, and I was like, oh, this is great. And then I looked, and I'm like, there's a lot of likes on this photo. How do all these people know our Jack? And who's this lady? And Ellie goes, Mom, it's the Minnesota Bachelorette. <laughs> Apparently, everybody else in the world knows about Michelle Young. Yeah. I will meet her today for the very first time. Sit. Good boy. <laughs> that is his quirk. <laughs> I'm Michelle, and this is my dog, Chief. I've been in a decent amount of like serious relationships. Went on a TV show, that clearly didn't work. But with Jack, he calms my nervous system. I feel like he truly understands how I operate. He pays attention to the little things. My mom and my sister-in-law were always saying, we want you to be with somebody who's like your dad. And he is to a T exactly like that. We'll go grab the car, pull it up when it's raining so that you don't have to get wet. We'll take the dog outside at night so that you're not going outside. He just, you know, takes care of those things. Every man needs to know how to cook like a signature meal for their lady friend. Absolutely. I'm just here to make sure that we get you romantically off on a good foot. Have you ever heard of something called marry me chicken? No. I haven't. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. No, no, I, I've never heard that. My bad. Okay, you yeah. know, we're kind of doing a little romance thing. Yeah, absolutely. How about we make Marry Me One Pot Shrimp? <laughs> oh, that's, I'm, I, <laughs> no pressure. I know, I'm just dying. No, I gotta so make fun of you a little it. bit. No, 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 you do, you do, you do. And then we're going to make a strawberry salad that will have a little bit of brie. And you know a little bit about wine because you brought some wine today. Absolutely, we have a great wine. Magna Carta Napa Valley. I love red wine, and red wine really, everybody says like, oh, neat. I I think red wine goes with anything. I think so too. And then we've got a delicious strawberry signature cocktail because it's kind of springy. Love that. We're gonna go to the grocery store together. Yeah, let's do it. Are you ready? Uh huh. We're okay. Rolling. Hi, Sean. Hi. I love that you're driving in your apron too. But I know it's amazing. <laughs> Let us just talk. How did you meet Michelle? We have a mutual friend. And I happened to bring up, do you have any friends? Like, do you have any single friends? And he said, well, have I ever mentioned Jack? Little did I know that Jack had asked Garrett, was his name, to introduce him to me, like, several times. I just had the urge to slide up, and I asked him to introduce me, and then we got to texting a little bit. I think that takes a lot of, like, guts to just reach out. Like, how did you know she was going to be the one? I kind of just you was just like, get let the me... Feeling? Yeah, I was like, let me shoot my shot real quick. And so we ended up meeting the same day. I was supposed to go out of town the next day for the whole weekend. I ended up canceling the trip. We hung out that night and hung out the whole entire weekend. And then by that Sunday, he was like, you gotta be my girlfriend. And it was just weird how it just clicked and everything. It was kind of cool because we didn't figure out that he had asked about me and I had asked about him. So for the first like two months of dating, I thought that I had asked to be introduced to him and he asked to be introduced to me, but I didn't know that. So it was kind of funny how it worked out. I love like stories about how people met because yeah. 
I met my husband. I was about to Kurt. ask you how'd you meet yeah. Kurt? Yeah. Well, he was the manager of the nightclub I was working at. So okay, at got work, it. which yeah. is never cool, but yeah. I was 19, he was 29. I can still remember I saw him walking. Yeah. And he had these really cute khaki pants and a press white shirt yeah. and glasses and loafers. Yeah. <laughs> and I just knew. And I, I said to my friend, I'm gonna marry that guy. Really? Literally, I did, yes. Did you approach him? Or did oh, approach yeah. Him? Okay. I had to ask him out six times before he said yes. <laughs> hey. All right, and with that, we are at the store. We're at Kowalski's. <laughs> you can see the rest of that. Stream the full episode of Taste Buds on Fox Local. Uh, just a couple things I want to say. First, um, Michelle's coming out, but first, uh, Stephanie, you, you can't take your apron off. Number two, <laughs> when you are as good looking as Michelle and Jack, I think you're just born with a significant other. I think you're like the, like the delivery room nurse is there, you pop out and they're like, oh, it's another baby. Is it a twin? No, it's a significant other. I think another one, you're just born with a girlfriend or boyfriend. Oh my goodness. Michelle joins us in the studio to talk about the great work, sincerely doing amazing work for students. You'll meet her when we come back, back in a moment. Well, you just saw Stephanie Hansen with former bachelorette Michelle Young and her uh, her new boy, her new friend, boyfriend. That sounds, when you look like that, you're not a boyfriend. Anyway, from today's buds. <laughs> Before she was on reality TV, Michelle was a teacher. And you know we love teachers uh, in the Twin Cities. And now she's using, and we love this too, using her platform for good. Audience, give it up for Michelle Young, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I love this. <laughs> We, I, I say it a lot, we're a goofy show, but when we can, we use, I think, and I th feel you feel the same way, I don't take this for granted. If you're going to have a platform like this, occasionally you have to use it for some good, you know? Uh, talk to me about your foundation. Yeah, so I just launched the Michelle Young Foundation. It's something that I've always wanted to do. I didn't realize it was going to come this soon, so I hit teacher burnout after COVID, um, and it was just had so many different things going on with after the TV show and was kind of trying to figure out what I could do that I was still passionate about. I'm really passionate about the youth. I didn't want to just let that piece go. And so that's where this came into play. I played college basketball, being able to create an after school program. And that's what really kind of kickstarted this homework and hoops program. So homework and hoops. So talk to me about that. So how, how specifically does the foundation help the kids? So it's for underprivileged students and we focus on tutoring for math and literacy since there's a lot of regression, especially after COVID, especially for our underprivileged students. And they also get access to play a fully organized sport. So they go into the classroom, they get learning coaches where we'll work on these different skills and kind of help them catch up. And then they get to go into the gymnasium. They have role models, coaches working with them as well. Because you know this as a teacher, and I, I, I talk about this a lot, people think, not, not everyone, but people think, oh, it's about uh, nine to two or just the school <laughs> in the classroom. And you know where I'm yeah. going. And it's like, uh -huh. no, no, no. I was I was transformed by after school uh, by after school activities. I was transformed. This is just me. I didn't do sports, but I did drama club and I wouldn't be where I am without that. And, and, and it's equally as important as just the basic education. So when you're putting these yep. kids in these programs, it helps, doesn't it? Absolutely. You mean you heard of the achievement gap? We don't call that it anymore. We call it the opportunity gap. After school programs, that time outside of the school is where their students are really doing their emotional growth, their learning, their additional growth. And so these experiences are kind of what are really impacting them. Is this filling? Is this filling the cup? Because I know. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure this chapter of your life is very exciting, but. Do you miss teaching, and does the foundation fill the cup a little bit? Uh, fill that. Fill, fill that gap for you. I miss working with students. I don't miss like not being able to go to the bathroom when you want, <laughs> and, and other things. Like there's a lot of things I you have to do too, with, right? Yeah, yeah. It's nice having a lunch if break. If I need to go right now, you're hosting this show. Oh, so I got yeah, it. I'll, yeah, hold yeah. it. I'll hold it down. I'll hold it down. <laughs> yes. But really. But it does. It, it is very fulfilling because my whole thing is that I'm passionate about students. I'm passionate about making a positive impact, and I'm doing that here. So yeah. And you can, and, and it's using because the, you ha you know. 
the, 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 the pop culture and the, the bachelor, it's goofy. It, it's we, you know what I mean? It's like it's a goofy thing. So to use that for good has to feel good. It has to be a, a way to use something silly uh, to do a greater good. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm late to the social uh, media game. I only logged on like three years ago. Really? And so, yeah, you know, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with it. And so I kind of watched all my friends go through it. I tried to avoid it. I caught up now with that anxiety that you get from social media. Yeah. But you know being able to have something that's fulfilling it gives me a purpose to be online to share my story what I'm going through the impact that I'm making and so that's kind of what why I can get behind it and you're doing and if you're watching us uh, from the Twin Cities probably one of the biggest social events of the year is uh, something called wine fest I love it you're gonna are yes. you hosting it this year I am gonna be hosting the dinner Look so, at you. Yeah, so yeah. yeah it's a great event ever it's fantastic yes yeah I'm I'm incredibly excited. Uh, Jack will be there with me. Um, we're going to go to the, some of the other events oh, as Jack well. Oh, Jack will be there. Okay. Jack will then be let there. me tell you, everyone in this audience will be buying tickets. I'm just telling you. Yeah, yeah. We got to talk. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Uh, did you, so you eventually, I got to ask, we're, we'll talk about more after the break, but touching on where we started with Stephanie Hansen, you eventually did cook with Stephanie. Did she scare you? No. no. I mean, she was in like... You can be honest. Don't worry about it. It's just me and you. you she's, she, she can be a little... She's a little extra sometimes. She, she's, she's super... I, I was a fifth grade teacher, okay? Not much can scare me these days, I feel like. <laughs> but but she, she's... No, she's wonderful. She's so her. high energy. And, you know, it's... She's cooking in, like, my family's house, so... Yeah. Are you a good cook? Y yeah. You are? I don't know. Yeah, you might have to ask Jack, but I, I say that I am. Jack? I think I am. Good cook? Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. What, what, <laughs> what is, I know we got to wrap, but like, what is your specialty? Like, if I was to come over, what are you, what would you cook really well? Ooh, cheesy potatoes. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Coming over. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I make really good biscuits. I'll come over, I'll bring biscuits, and I'll, we'll, have, we'll have cheesy potatoes and biscuits. We'll Hot do love. that. Yep. More of Michelle <laughs> when we come back. Back in a moment, everyone. Oh, that's great. What grade did you teach? Welcome back. More. The good human. Just a good human. Former bachelorette Michelle Young. Let me ask you, we've had, um, well, let me start with this. Speaking of The Bachelor, because I know people watching are like, when are you going to ask about The Bachelor? I'm getting to that. Uh, <laughs> why do you think, there was actually an article written, I, I, I would love to give credit, I think maybe bringmethenews.com, talked about the fact that there are so many Minnesotans that are very successful mm. on this franchise. Do you have a theory why? Honestly, mm, I think it might have to, come back to I feel like a lot of people from Minnesota are family oriented yeah and you know when you go on the bachelor bachelorette you're kind of there to find your person to start a family or to have a family but that and we're really con like good at overcoming adversity because like our winter yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know we're really good at like locking down yeah. and getting through things so like we're we can get through tough times yes so we, we can you know? don't mess with us Absolutely seriously not. no what what was the thing because, you know, we see the edited 42 minutes without commercials. We see it all pretty and bowed up. Yeah. When you, uh, going back to either just The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, what is the part of the process that you had the toughest time trying to wrap your brain around? Because you're an educator. You're not. You don't do TV. What right. was the weirdest part for you? Uh, probably just well, not being able to speak to my family was really difficult for me because they take away your phones. I will say there are definitely ways that I figured out how to talk to them. <laughs> 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 I have, nobody knows about that really, but that and just as a teacher, you kind of have in the back of your mind at all times, my students might be watching this, like the family, my dad. Yeah. So you're just, you know, careful about I didn't even about think about things. that. Yeah, when you're taping this. And is it yeah. hard? Because, you know, I, I always tell people when interns come in here, they, they want advice on how to do well in TV. It's, it's the cliche advice of go on the air and be yourself. And you got to forget about the cameras yeah. and the audience. And it's hard to do. Is it hosting a show is one thing, but trying to get a relationship going when cameras are literally in your face. Was that harder than you thought it would be to be natural? No, actually, surprisingly, really? no. I, I don't know if maybe it's because growing up playing basketball in college, like there were always eyes on me. I was just used to it. It's not something that I always say is that it wasn't fulfilling, but I was able to handle it. And so kind of with this whole process, I did get used to it. And, but it is a 
really weird if you think it's, about it. It's really weird. Yeah. I mean, you, when you go on a date in normal life, right. ABC isn't with you. You right. know what I mean? Right? No. I mean, you're not. Yeah. And, and the, I'll say the interruptions are really hard to deal with. Just, I mean, we were at the Golden Wedding, and it's weird because there's like a cut, like right before they say their vows, and you're like, wait, time out. And so there's those types of things that you don't think about, and it comes together nicely for the viewers. I'm happy because then you guys get a good show. But it is weird for us because it'll be in the middle of a conversation, and then like a producer will walk in and ask a question, and there's times where you're just tired, you're like, just let me ask my question. <laughs> Dude, oh, <laughs> or, you know, when yeah. I was the lead, I'd be Give me a fragrant moment. Pretend they're not there. Yeah. You know, just, yeah, because you want it to feel natural. And if they're ruining a moment, if you're having, a, like, a genuine moment, and then Skippy comes in with a clipboard and a camera. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if they don't, definitely one of the other contestants would. <laughs> yeah. Because, you, because you're around kids and you're an mm -hmm. educator and you, you can read fifth graders. Um, and I think people really never change. Did you <laughs> or were you really good at scoping out your cast members of who was who? Like, okay, I, I, I know your number. I know your number. I know. I see you. Yeah. Did, were you pretty good at reading I, people? Ooh. I, I would say that yes, normally, but in this situation, they're really only in front of you for like 10 minutes at a time, and you're very much excluded. So you're not allowed to like sit and talk and have separate conversations and things like that. So you are always like focused on the conversation and everything that's happening back with, you know, the other contestants, you're not like weary of that. So you really do have to re rely on other people to be your eyes. So Got it. That's what's tricky. Um, I want to take a shot at Jack. We've been having fun with Jack and showing. <laughs> I want to end on a sweet note. What's your favorite thing about that guy right there? Aww. What's your favorite? <laughs> what's your? What's your absolute favorite thing about that guy right there? He's just such a genuine, like, good human. Honestly, the best person, hands down, that I've ever met. He always has pure intentions. He goes out of his way, not just for me, but anybody around him will reach out and extending branch to anybody. So he's, he's phenomenal in that way. Oh, I love it. Well, I got to say... We've had a lot. We've had a lot of bachelor and bachelor. You're just delightful, and I wish Thank you, you nothing but luck. Thank you for being here, I appreciate Michelle it. Young. Everybody. Thank you, sweetie. We'll be right Thank back. You. Back in a moment. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. What, are you a hugger? Yes. Oh, yes. Do you mind? If, do you have Welcome back. Come see us. Go to Eventbrite.com and search for the Jason Show. Get tickets. Hey, and I want to tell you, if you want more information, themichelleyoungfoundation.org, themichelleyoungfoundation.org. She was delightful. So nice. Time to meet the next JVIP of the week today. It's Bonita Reynolds from Farmington, Minnesota. She loves the banter uh, between all of us on the show. She also loves hearing my opinions on the daily stories and activities outside the show. I love you, Bonita. I, I appreciate you. You get a Jason Show mug and enter to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience. $150 gift card to Becker Furniture and a $250 gift card to Renew Med Spa. Back after these words. to tell you the conversations uh, that happened during the commercial break uh they all revolved around jack and uh and uh photographer oh. eric who let me tell you photographer eric is very straight um a happily married two children most <laughs> days of the week and uh <laughs> and i say that for tanya not for for eric but uh anyway my point being is i walk over to talk to eric and a photographer or photographer eric and jeff and bjorn and photographer eric looks at me and he goes I might just be attracted to Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I He's, might be attracted to Michelle. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm oh, very straight married too. Uh, I mean. And we were saying too, to be fair, and to just not objectify that poor man, uh, Michelle, we've had, a, I love Leslie Fema, we've interviewed mm -hmm. a lot of bachelor people on this mm -hmm. show in nine years. Delightful. She's yes. probably one of my favorites that we've had on the show. Stunning. Stunning. Smart, mm -hmm. and I kind. and I really do kind, and I do really love anyone that can take a ridiculous show like that, mm -hmm. take their fame from it, and do good with it. Because what right. else are you gonna do? I right mean, you here know, too, in like her own community. Yeah, I think it's, that's great. It's great. I wish her uh, nothing but, but luck. Again, it's the Michelle Young Foundation dot org. Mm -hmm. So go go check that out, and we'll keep an eye on Eric's marriage, and I'll tell you how that turns <laughs> out. Yeah, <laughs> tomorrow.
<laughs> it's a crapshoot. Anyway, tomorrow he's worked with Liza Minnelli for decades, as well as uh, Countess Luann and countless others. The one and only Billy Stritch will join us in studio. He is a maestro. You're going to meet him tomorrow, but right now this could do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Remember when we did that? <laughs>